Hello everybody, welcome back to another video. This week's video is the first one during a Durham term. I've actually not been in Durham academically since March 2020, so it's been a while. It's the end of Freshers. I'm actually filming this today. Same day, same bed. I thought I would do a bit of a different video, maybe a little bit controversial, but basically I was at the Freshers Fair the other day and I was given the Palatinate, which is the Durham newspaper. I thought I could go through this because this is full of like all the controversy in the unit. I thought I could go through this and just give my opinion. No one cares about my opinion, but just give my opinion on all the topics that are talked, not all of them, but some of the topics that are talked about. I've spent my Friday of Freshers week annotating a newspaper. Let's roll into it. Before we start this video, I just want to disclaim that the newspaper is deliberately showing controversial things, so my views might be a bit controversial, but I'm not trying to be controversial, I'm just trying to give my opinion, and I'm trying to look at it from both sides. This is just my opinion, and my opinion means absolutely nothing. Hopefully it shouldn't upset anybody. I have tried to be very double-sided but we'll see so hope you enjoyed the video the first article is about freshers are facing half an hour walk from colleges to accommodation after chaotic admissions so basically what this is about is um lots of people were getting reallocated their college because durham let too many students in they've got reallocated so say they were given hatfield and then last minute they were told oh actually you're in Van Milder or something like that. I have a few thoughts about this. First of all, the, the gist of this is that it's happened because of COVID. Even before COVID, it was very common for people to be reallocated colleges. And that's why I always say it's never a good idea to put like the most sought after colleges for your choices. If you put down university college, the castle, say if you put that down as your first choice, it's rare that you're going to get that, so you're probably going to be allocated Trevs or Van Milder, something that doesn't get as many. So you should put one that's kind of in the middle, like John's or Mary's or something, then you're more likely to get it if you don't go for the most sought after ones. So it is common like all through the years, people always get reallocated, but obviously this year it's a lot more reallocations. One thing I have noticed though is the bad communication, like one girl talking in the article is like I didn't hear anything about it and I've noticed from my DMs that I get on Instagram the uni do seem to be really bad at communicating things about accommodation and things but one thing I thought was it's basically the same as any other university, like for both of my brothers um, one was in Sheffield and one was in um, Leeds Beckett, when we dropped them off they didn't know until the day we dropped them off what accommodation they were in so I guess it's just a little bit like being in any other university you don't know until the day you arrive what accommodation you're in but I know people come to Durham for the Durham experience so if you view the Durham experience as knowing what college you're going to be in far in advance then I guess that's that's that but some people are upset that they're not in their first choice college but at the end of the day it does depend on gowned or non-gowned. I can see why people would be upset over that or catered or non-catered. I can see why that would be upsetting. But if you'll just change from one college to another, it really doesn't matter what college you're in. Like a college is a college. It's the people that make it. If you've been put in a different college to what you wanted, um, I wouldn't be too upset because it's not like you knew everyone in the first college and you were gonna be besties like it's still a fresh start and college is college literally it doesn't matter which one you're in they're more or less all the same obviously the buildings are different i can see why that would be upsetting but it's not the be all and end all for example i was in mary's but i didn't spend any time in mary's i spent all of my time in van milder it's not the be all and end all people get so caught up in being passionate about their colleges and i think definitely in this situation where people are being moved and things it's a not ideal don't don't get so caught up just go with the flow see what your friends are like that's what matters it's the people that make a college not the college itself so my advice to students that are struggling with the college reallocations which i'm sure you'll be fine with now because you've already started but um what i would say is don't stress about it every college obviously has their own stereotypes and things but all the colleges are big enough that each personality type and friendship group type posh people the clever people the geeky people the sporty people like they are represented in every college and um, so don't stress that like you're not going to find your group because maybe you picked your college based on the stereotype thinking it would match you 
but it's represented everywhere so I wouldn't stress about that um, and I'd also just forget the expectations just treat it like you would if you were in any other uni finding your accommodation like without knowing in advance college is definitely all about the people and all the colleges are just as patriotic as each other so I wouldn't stress about that one other point that was brought up was people were not living in college they were living in like unite student blocks and things like that but that's also common because lots of the bailey colleges have additional buildings that are on elvet so it's already a common thing and you still live college life like you're still involved in the college activities it's very common to for colleges to have multiple buildings and it's basically that again just like in a unite students building as opposed to a uni building but it's all still the same like the events on the bailey colleges the main events are in the building on the actual bailey but there are still people living on the elvet like it's it's always been a thing that people aren't living in the main college building it's just happening now for more colleges than it usually was one thing i did have to say was that they're offering incoming freshers 500 pound to move college so i guess that kind of helps if you've been moved college that's nice to get and then they're also i saw something else sorry it's continued on a different page they're also offering students five thousand pounds to defer i think personally it's absolutely ridiculous you're not even offering your current students any kind of financial recuperation for not getting the full course like i am paying the full price of money for a four-year course when i've only been in uni but so far, I've only spent about 12 months actually in the uni. Um, I missed my entire third year. I don't even, I studied for third year. I did my online courses, but I, I don't get year abroad included in my degree. I couldn't go out there, but I still had to pay for my year abroad. I was not even allowed to defer my year abroad. Even though I wasn't able to actually go abroad, I wasn't able to defer it. Even though I had to do it from home, they wouldn't allow me to defer it that's kind of annoying that they're paying people to defer when people that I didn't even want to get paid to defer I literally just wanted to be able to defer it and I wasn't allowed so it's frustrating. Everyone had to pay for the 2019-2020 year when the first six months were full of strikes and the second six months didn't happen. I think the fact that they're offering £5,000 to people to defer is really ridiculous when you're not even paying your current students who are not getting what they paid for at all. Where was the library access last year? When could people go to in-person classes? Like, people are not getting what they signed up for, but you're paying for people that aren't even here yet. I think that's really silly. And I also think it's what's happened because they paid people to defer last year. And that's why they've now got the oversubscribing in the colleges. And it's just gonna follow on year after year. You're just gonna have more and more people because you keep making people defer. Durham should have learned from the first year where it happened after COVID and not given out so many places this year. It's the second year it's happened, so you should have learned. And then you wouldn't have to reallocate colleges, which has clearly upset a lot of people. And then you wouldn't have to spend a load of money and you could spend it on the people that actually are your students and are getting ripped off. And then that leads on to my next point, which is about um, the union of voting whether they're going to do strikes again. The strikes are about pensions and wages and salaries and things. If they weren't giving £5,000 to students to defer, then they would have more money to give out to their staff. I think Durham seriously need to look into what they are spending their money on. And that leads on to another thing, more onto money, is that Durham in the summer spent half a million pounds on lateral flow testing. Now, lateral flow testing, you can order your own lateral flow test online for free. I don't know why they're then spending half a million pound on their own center when students can literally just order their own. Now, I'm not sure because you get the lateral flow testing for free um, via the NHS, obviously maybe international students may need it, but when you order a kit, you get about eight to 10 tests in that pack. Um, it's a international students, if they're living with students from the UK, they could use their tests. They could have like a testing unit, but it doesn't need to be half a million pounds. Like I'm sure to cover all the international students, half a million pound in one summer is a little bit unnecessary. I think that was an unnecessary cost when 70% of the students are from the UK and can get their test for free. It's also a hassle. It's a massive hassle because any event you want to go to, when I was at home, if I wanted to go to an event where you needed to test, I'd do the test at home and everything was fine. Now you have to book and you have to queue up and it's just a waste of time. If you had them at home, it's if you could use the at home ones, 
it would be so much easier. So I think that is another, like you've got students that can't fit in the colleges that they're meant to go to, you've got staff that aren't getting paid enough, you've got students that have paid for courses they're not getting, but let's spend 600 million, not 600 million, let's spend 600,000 on tests that people can get for free anyway. I know that the half a million pound was not just to get testing for international students because everyone is currently required to use the testing centre as opposed to at-home tests, even though they're the same tests, they're the LFT ones. Then, onto a happier news story. This says that Durham is the 14th most Instagrammable university city. And I do think there are lots of places you can take good Instagrams, especially the cathedral. Like, one thing I would say about Durham is I think in terms of taking pictures, I think it's nice for taking pictures of landscapes and scenery, but I wouldn't say taking pictures with people in them is the most Instagrammable. If you've got a person in front of the cathedral, the cathedral's huge and the person is small. The next news article is about how 36% of the student properties are owned by the same 10 owners. Okay, I'm not really gonna specifically talk about the article, I'm just gonna talk about student landlords in general. They are exploiters, they will exploit students at any obstacle because they think that they can just get away with it. And if you talk to anyone, the landlords will try to exploit them. But if someone gets their dad or their mum involved, or like an adult that's not a student, then immediate, immediately they'll do what they were originally meant to do. They just think because students are students they're not going to bother and then like they always take your deposit always and they're just ridiculous like student landlords are so bad they literally just exploit they don't really follow the laws they just do whatever they please for example our flat is missing half of the stuff it was meant to come with it was meant to come with desks and the desks didn't arrive until this week which is like three and a half months into the contract and then it's meant to have a dryer but there's no dryer and there's all these things missing yet we're paying we agreed to pay for a flat that had all them things and it doesn't so and then at the end of the contract no doubt they're going to be like oh my god we're taking your deposit because that's what student landlords do and um, so my advice is make sure you take pictures of all the damage that is in your rental property already um so that at the end when they're like we're taking your deposit you can be like no way they just think that students aren't going to fight back so many students i would say 90 percent of students just give up and let the landlords do what they want you can't do that you have to keep pushing because they are exploiting you and they're not doing what's proper they're doing what they want to get more money from you and the next article which i'm probably going to do a proper video about is is fresh as the be all and end all and definitely not my freshers week i spent it with people that i never spent time with again after freshers week like freshers week is so intense and all I remember thinking about Freshers Week was how long do I have to pretend to be this happy for? Like, because you're surrounded with people 24-7 and you have to act like you're having an amazing time. You have to put on your Instagram that you're having an amazing time. You have to tell everyone at home you're having an amazing time, but actually you're not sleeping. You don't know anyone you're around yet and you're not having an amazing time. Freshers Week is not the be all and end all and most friendships that made it, most friendships in uni don't usually come from Freshers Week. They do, a lot of them do, but like none of my friendships in uni came from freshers week. I literally saw someone post a TikTok the other day saying everyone's already made their friendship groups, I'm left out. No one really solidifies their friendship groups until after Christmas. That's very common and most people feel like fish after water fish out of water until at least after Christmas. Some people take several years. Freshers week is definitely not the be all and end all and if you had a crap freshers week just keep going. Um, I, I would say as a rule of thumb, unless it's going to absolutely be detrimental to your life, try stick at uni until at least Christmas because it's not a good measure. The first term is not a good measure of what uni will be like. My first term, I was sleeping 24-7. I was alone 24-7. Like it was not what the rest of uni has been like. Don't judge it on Freshers Week. Freshers Week is 100% not the be all and end all. It's a random week that you just have to get through and then you'll be fine after. Um, and then the next one is about the damage of the Durham stereotype. Now I've not really read this article, I've just looked at the title and I'm going to talk about what I think about the Durham stereotype. There is definitely a Durham stereotype that is like a rich private school rah 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 thing. Um, it definitely is the stereotype with like the, the puffer jackets and the flared jeans. In terms of the damage of this, I feel like any stereotype or like putting people into groups is damaging. For the people that do fit the stereotype, it's a bit mean to be like, oh you're just a stereotype. It takes away their individual personalities, which is not very nice. I don't really fit the stereotype at all. My style um, being the short fat thing from Wales is, is not really the Durham stereotype. <laughs> 
for people that don't fit the stereotype, I think it's not great either because some people I notice like when you go to a uni, there are a lot of people that fit the stereotype in Durham. So when you come, it can be easy to feel overwhelmed and change yourself to fit other people, but you shouldn't do that because you'll find people that match you. But I think there's a lot of pressure on people to fit in, so they change themselves. And uni isn't meant to be about changing yourself. It's meant to be about finding yourself and finding your true self. Um, so for people that don't fit the stereotype, I think it's also tricky as well, um, feeling like you don't fit in. And I think there is a lot of cliqueiness as well for example at the freshness fair the other day people were just looking over like Natasha's head and they would just look over her head and look for like the tall skinny blonde and the flares and things there definitely is a bit of a cliqueiness to it as well the the Durham stereotype is harmful for both sides people that don't fit the stereotype and people that fit the stereotype because it separates people and it makes things a lot less inclusive and very exclusive and cliquey maybe that's all the articles I wanted to talk about I'll just check. Yeah, so I think that's all the articles I wanted to talk about today. This could be a little bit controversial. I hope it's not. I'm just giving my opinion on all the things in the newspaper and my opinion means nothing, so don't worry about it. Just, if you don't like my opinion, just click off because I'm too sensitive to deal with any kind of hate. But I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. If you disagree with anything I said, you can politely put it in the comments and then that can make a discussion and people love a discussion. Yeah, I hope you enjoyed this video and I'll see you in next week's video. Bye. Bye, thanks for watching.